you are here with us. In the readings today, we hear of the foundations of our faith. So let us listen as people of faith, finding wisdom in God's word. Our mass intention is for Edward Fowle. The Osage County Needs Collections is this weekend. Thank you for your generosity. Please join in singing the opening hymn number 264 in the Missalette. Jesus Christ. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of God, the love of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather on this third Sunday of Lent, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments." You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female sleeve or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord.
responsorial. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the, words of the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the, words of everlasting life. the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. And Jesus answered her, You are right in saying I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, 
Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman, but still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that the one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything I have done. And when the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. In the last, what do you say, 30 years or so, we've become very conscious of our need for hydration. You know, I'm still of the generation that we grew up drinking water out of the hose in the garden or, you know, out of the faucet at the sink. Nobody thought to have water in a bottle, and we certainly wouldn't have bought it. But here we are, and it's become something very common to us to have bottled water, to have water available at all times. But it is important. It is critically important for the human body to have hydration. A few months ago, I got ill, and... I stopped drinking as much as I needed to. And after that experience, I promised myself I would never allow myself to be dehydrated again. It was a very ugly feeling. And it can turn very badly, very quickly. We are told that it takes about three days if without water for a person to die. The woman at the well is like everybody else. She's simply physically thirsty. She comes to the well at a time when she knows the other women won't be there because they know what kind of a person she is. She has kind of a bad reputation, we would say. She's not the kind of person that would fit well into so polite society. And so she comes at an odd hour and she sees not only a man, but a Jewish man. Now the Jews and the Samaritans had separated a very, very long time before this. And there was great animosity, great hatred between them. So there are a lot of things that Jesus does, if we had more time to look at it, which are rules that he is breaking or common customs. But he's thirsty. He is physically thirsty, and he recognizes in the woman who comes to the well that she is spiritually thirsty. 
That's evident in the fact that she has had five husbands and she's currently living with another man. She's thirsty and doesn't realize that's what her issue is. And she tries to distract Jesus and get him all off topic and all this kind of thing, but Jesus keeps bringing it back. You need the water of life. Moses in the desert, the people grumbled against him because they had no water. He said, did you bring us out here to die? The Lord commanded him to speak to the rock and the rock produced water. Water is a life-giving substance, as we said. But for us as Christians, it's far more than that. The life-giving water that Jesus offers bubbles up constantly. Now, there are any number of lakes and things that are probably fine to drink from, but clear running water, not always, but less in the bigger picture, clear running water is a sign that it's healthy that it's not filled with sediment and uh, debris and that sort of thing. Jesus offers that kind of water to this woman spiritually. He says, forget all about coming to the well. It's not about this. This is just to get your attention, so to speak. The thirst that every human being has comes from God. It is a thirst for God. It is something that is innate in our nature. When we look at the world and we think, well, why do people act the way that they do, making bad choices, uh, choosing self-destructive or maybe other destructive, to, destructive uh, actions and things? Because of the thirst. They don't recognize that what they're trying to do is satisfy a thirst, the thirst that can only be quenched by Jesus himself. He said if we come to him, he will give us living water over and over again flowing through us. That is a constant renewal of the Spirit. St. Augustine said that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. We could rephrase that and say our hearts are thirsty until they drink of the living water. The living water is life itself. It gives us life. It renews us. Just as water renews the body, keeps the organs working, keeps the tissues alive, gives us what we need. So it is with the Spirit. So where do we find this living water? First of all, in the sacrament of the Eucharist, obviously. We find it in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It's the source and summit of our faith. But all of our faith brings us to the living water. Every part of our faith is important to us. Every part of our faith, we might look at it as drops of water. And it all comes together through Jesus, in Jesus, from Jesus for us. The water of life that we need can only be found in faith in Jesus Christ. Like I said, you wonder why people make such terrible choices with their lives, or their lives are always so empty and vain, and they're always searching for something. It's not something that they're searching for, it is someone. Until we are reconnected to God our Creator, we are forever thirsty. We are always in need of the spiritual refreshment that only comes from faith in God. Until we are united with him by faith, we will always remain thirsty. And nothing on earth will quench that thirst. When we're thirsty, almost anything will do. Milk, water, something alcoholic perhaps. But we find something that fills that thirst, that takes care of that need. And I, for one, I said, I hate being thirsty. I think I'd rather be hungry than thirsty. It is just such an awful feeling, wondering when and where and how can I find water. There is an ancient poem, I guess it is, that says, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. People who have been uh, found themselves on the ocean are desperate for water, but they're surrounded by it. But salt water is not healthy to drink. And so they continue to thirst. We have found the living water. We have found that source of the living water, faith in Jesus Christ. May God continue to let that, uh, hold that water flow through us. I notice people are still trying to find holy water in the fonts. We haven't got there yet, but doesn't it make you think? Doesn't it make you think, what if there were no water? What would we do? We found the faith, we have found the faith, we have found the fount of life, we drink deeply and never 
run, it never runs dry. Jesus told her, this well, you're going to go away thirsty. You're going to need to come back again and again and again. But the water that I will give you will spring up within you for your whole life. It will fill you and satisfy you every day of your life. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. With the Father, through him all things were made. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. <clears throat> According with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With faith, hope, and love, we bring our prayers and our needs to the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, especially as he travels through Iraq, that he'll be kept safe and healthy. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, all those who have asked for our prayers in general, and in particular, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died and those who will die today and those who will mourn their passing, we pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for the great and wonderful blessings that we receive each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, That the living water, Jesus Christ, may flow through us into the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Holy living God, hear the prayers of your people gathered before you in faith. Grant them according to your gracious will through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing the offertory hymn number 336 in the St. Augustine hymnal. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. (laughs) 
Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faith will await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing the communion hymn number 782 in the St. Augustine hymnal. I give 
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Sorry, I didn't give you that. <laughs> Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of things before the final blessing. Good to see Deacon Larry with us again. He's been doing what he needs to do, but we're always glad to see him. At the end of Mass, after the final blessing, we'll, throughout the month of March at least, we were going to pray the prayer to St. Joseph. You should find a copy in the pews. I notice there's a different one at, in front, but we are going to pray the prayer to St. Joseph, Terror of Demons. This is the month of St. Joseph, and also the Pope has declared this the year of St. Joseph, protector and uh, patron of fathers, husbands, and many others. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to you. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, cast your solemn gaze upon the devil and all his minions, and protect us with your mighty staff. You fled through the night to avoid the devil's wicked designs. Now with the power of God, smite the demons as they flee from you. Grant special protection, we pray, for children, fathers, families, and the dying. By God's grace, no demon dares approach while you are near. So we beg of you always, be near to us. Amen. Please join in singing the closing hymn number 250 in the Missalette, verse 3.